good morning students in today's class we are going to discuss a very interesting a very colorful and a very important question which is going to come definitely in your semester final examination and uh, next at the end of the video i'll be showing you a small video pertaining to the life cycle of paxinia graminis reticei and you can only enjoy the video unless you concentrate in the first half of the class okay yeah our topic is life cycle of paxinia graminis reticei okay this paxinia graminis reticei is in heterocious rust we have already discussed what is meant by heterocious and what is meant by uh, autocious rust in our last class okay heterocious rust is nothing but a uh, a fungi which completes its life cycle on two different hosts okay this paxinia graminis reticei our fungi is an heterocious fungi okay and it produces five types of spores okay you can see here five spore stages the first is the spermacea or it is also called as pycnia which produces pycnia spores and the next is the acio spores and the third is urido telio and the basidio spores as it is a life cycle the last basidio spore it produces again the spermacea okay another thing as i told you that it is going to produce uh, its life cycle it, it is going to complete its life cycle on two different hosts okay the first two spermogonia and the acio spores which are going to produce on the barberry plant and the next three stages are going to produce on the wheat plant okay and next uh, important questions that is a nucleus stage uh, status of each spore that is the first and the last spore the first and the last spore is a uninucleate spore and the center spores are having a binucleate spore okay now in detail we will see what are the spore stages and what are the structures that the spore stage is going to produce okay as i told you barberry and wheat are the two hosts first is a bar first we'll see what are the spore stages which are produced on the barberry plant okay the first is spermogonia the first structure is a spermogonia you can see here okay uh, until a long period of time the scientists and all the uh, scholars they have thought that the spermogonia has no role in the life cycle of uh, paxinia graminis reticei it is a functionalless asexual spore but after in 1927 by the scientist craig he has discovered that it is uh, spermogonia is playing a major role in the completion of the life cycle of the paxinia graminis reticei that is when the basidio spore it produces when the basidio spore is released from the when the basidia releases from the basidio spore when that basidio spore lands uh, lands on the barberry plant on the upper leaf surface of the barberry plant will be that produces a spermogonium okay and we'll be having two strains different strains will be there positive and negative strains okay when the positive strain of a spermacea of the positive strain comes in contact with the receptive hyphae of the uh, negative one then the fertilization will occur after fertilization the spermogonia will produce a hyphae from the bottom of the spermogonium and this hyphae reaches the lower surface of the leaf and it starts producing the acial cup the second stage or the second spore stage which is called as acia i mean acial cup in which the acio spores are produced these acio spores are small in size around in size and these are arranged in chains you can see here you can see here okay and these two stages that is a pycnia spores and the acio spores these two uh, stages are produced on the barberry okay and next and next are the three stages which are produced on the wheat plant okay and this is very important for us as the wheat is a second stable food crop of our country okay the first the third stage is the the second stage uh, is the eurodospores zero is the spermacea one is the asiospores and two is the eurodospores here in eurodospores eurodospore is called as an asexual uh, asexual spore or the repeating spore okay eurodospore can directly give rise to teleospore or eurodospore will goes on reproduce i mean infecting the wheat plant okay but this particular eurodospore cannot survive or cannot survive in the adverse climatic conditions as a Uh, high temperatures or low temperatures so what does that um, paxinia graminis reticei does it stops producing i mean um, in the adverse conditions it stops producing the production of eurodospores and it starts producing the teleospores these teleospores are the sexual spores and it has a very thick wall okay thick wall spores with two cell okay these teleospores are having a ca capacity to i mean to sustain the adverse climatic conditions and from this teleospores we will be getting the basidiospores okay on germination of the teleospore you can see the promycelium which we have already discussed in the first class okay this is a promycelium on which promycelium it is divided into four cells on each cell we will be seeing a small stigmata on which the basidiospores are formed okay in the first i told that two uninucleate <laughs> first is the 
spermatia and the last one is the basidospores. Okay, again these basidospores will again, these basidospores are not having a capability of infecting the wheat. Okay, as the life cycle should repeat, what does it infect? Barberry, barberry, that is it. Okay, these are the symptoms of uh, stem, stem rust of wheat and we are having three types of rust, stem rust, I mean black stem rust, brown, brown stem rust and yellow stem rust. Okay. Here today we'll just we have just discuss, discussed the life cycle of vaccine agraminus triticide. In the next class we'll discuss in detail about the what is stem rust, black stem rust, orange stem rust, and yellow stem rust. Okay, that's it.